ಚೈತನ್ಯಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಕದಾಮಯ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೂನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನಾ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮನೆ ಗೌರತ್ವಶೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತೀತ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಾ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ್ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸಮಡಿ ವಿಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಬ್ರೀಫ್ಲಿ ರಿವೈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಡೇ ಹರೇ ಯಸ್ ಪ್ರೀ yesterday we were disc- we discussed that how dhru maharaj got empowered upon touching the uh, when lot as he then he got empowered to speak mm. so in this context we were discussing that how before speaking or writing anything about spiritual subject matter one needs the mercy of the lord one mm. then one gets empowered and then one, we get uh, the example of krishna das kaviraj goswami right how he was seeking blessings of the vaishnava and lord right and which is the other example we saw we also saw Uh, propad himself okay propad and one more we saw some quote also ah krishnas kaviraj goswami we discussed shukde goswami okay okay so he got empowered and then he began to recite prayers so we will continue this prayers of dhruva maharaj canto 4 chapter 9 So we finish till text 7 we'll go to text 8 Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ನರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ರಿಸೈಡ್ ತ್ವದತ್ತಯಾವಯುನಯೇದಮಚಿಶ್ವ ಸುಪ್ತ ಪ್ರಬುದ್ಧ ಇವ ನಾಥ ಭವತ್ ಪ್ರಪನ್ನ ತಪವರ್ಗ್ಯ ಶರಣ ತವ ಪಾದ ಮೂಲ ವಿಸ್ಮರ್ಯತಿಬಂಧೋ ಓ ಮೈ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಫುಲ್ಲಿ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಅನ್ ಟು ಯು ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಗೇವ್ ಹಿಮ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಸ್ ಹಿ ಕುಡ್ ಸಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಅವೇಕನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಜುಲೈಸಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಇಮಿಜಿಯೇಟ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ you are the only shelter of all persons who desire liberation and you are the friend of all who are distressed how therefore can a learned person who has perfect knowledge ever forget you so here dhruva maharaj is describing how initially lord brahma was given knowledge by the lord and that's how he created the entire universe 
Hmm. So a few points from Shri Prabhupada's purport. The supreme personality of Godhead cannot be forgotten even for a moment by his surrendered devotees. The devotee understands that the Lord's causeless mercy is beyond his estimation. He cannot know how much he is benefited by the grace of the Lord. The more a devotee engages himself in the devotional service of the Lord, the more encouragement is supplied by the energy of the Lord. And then basically Prabhupada is giving the translation of Tesham Sata Yuktanam Bajatam Priti Purta. Being so encouraged, the devotee can never forget at any moment the personality of Godhead. He always feels obliged to him for having achieved increased power in devotional service by his grace. And the last line of that paragraph, a devotee therefore never forgets the benefit derived from the Lord. The Lord is addressed here as Artha Bandhu, which means friend of the distressed. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, after many, many births of executing severe austerities in search of knowledge, one comes to the point of real knowledge and becomes wise when one surrenders unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Mayavadi philosopher who does not surrender unto the Supreme Person is understood to be lacking in real knowledge. The devotee in perfect knowledge cannot forget his obligation to the Lord at any moment. Hare Krishna. Please go ahead. Okay, this is Vishnu Chaktagur's commentary on the verse. Please read. You alone possesses all powers. You are to be worshipped by those who have knowledge, by the devotees, who have knowledge given by you. Those surrendered to you, such as Brahma Bhavad and the Prapanna. Uh, Bhavad Prapanna, such as Brahma and the Kumaras, or I am not able to see properly. Okay, maybe somebody this side can. You are able to see? Okay, somebody this side can. Those surrender to you, Bhavat Prapanna, such as Brahma and the Kumaras or Jnani Bhaktas, saw the universe by knowledge given by you. How they see like a person who are sleeping and then wakes up. How can a person who knows the favor you have given? Him ever forget your lotus feet, which are the shelter of the inquisitive devotees, Jigyasu Bhakta, qualified for liberation, Apavarga. One who obtain ob, one who obtaining knowledge from you and does not worship you is ungrateful. O friend of the suffering devotee, Artha Bhakta. It should be understood that this verse mentioned the three types of devotees according to the Gita verse 7.16. Okay, so here he's mentioning that how the Lord reciprocates with these three types of devotees as mentioned in the Chatur Vidavajanti Imam verse, Artho, Jignyasur, Artharti and Jnani. So here the Lord is being addressed as Artha Bando. So the Lord is the friend of those who are distressed. He relieves the distress of those who are distressed. And so therefore he's called Artha Bando. He reciprocates with the Artha Bhakta. And then he's saying that the Lord also reciprocates with the Jnani Bhaktas who are uh, such as Brahma and the Kumaras. So here the word Bhavat Prapanna. Bhavat Prapanna is used in the word to word. Srila Prabhupada translates it as Lord Brahma who surrendered unto you. So they come in the category of the Jnani Bhaktas and the Lord gives them the knowledge. He gave Brahma the knowledge by which he, can, he could create at the time of creation. We have already studied that in details in the third canto. And 
also the Lord reciprocates with the Jignasu Bhakta, the inquisitive devotees who are qualified for liberation, apavargya. Tasya apavargya sharanam tavapada mulam. So in this way, the Lord reciprocates with uh, all these different types of devotees. And um, therefore, he is saying, vismaryate, vismaryate krita vida. So how can one forget? How can one forget the mercy which the Lord gives to his devotees? How can one ever forget all the wonderful activities which the Lord is performing for the sake of his devotees? How can one forget the causeless mercy which the Lord is bestowing upon his devotees, which is far beyond one's estimation? Therefore, it is causeless. It is not that I deserve it. Therefore, it is causeless. There is no cause. It is the only reason is that the Lord is Artabando. The only reason is because the Lord is very merciful to those who are distressed. And that is everyone in the material world. And so, therefore, he's saying, How can one forget the, the mercy of the Lord? Therefore, Shil Prabhupada begins the purport by saying, The Supreme Personality of God it cannot be forgotten even for a moment by his surrendered devotees. Okay, and towards the end of the paragraph, a devotee therefore never forgets the benefit derived from the Lord. Hmm. So an important uh, quality which Dhruva Maharaj is teaching all of us through this prayer is the quality of gratitude. And so here we find uh, Dhruva Maharaj expressing his gratitude towards the Lord for having enlivened all his senses, for having spiritualized all his senses, empowered him to understand about the Supreme Lord and offer prayers to the Supreme Lord. So Dhruva Maharaj is expressing his gratitude towards the Supreme Lord. And we find that the Supreme Lord himself has this quality of gratitude. Any examples? The, okay, the Lord was grateful to the gopis. And uh, what did he say? Yes, so he was feeling grateful to the gopis. Some other examples? Mm. Okay, okay, Lord Ram and Hanuman, good example. Some other examples? Lord expressing his gratitude, Manman Shah. Mm. Right, okay, fine, good example. Jay and Vijay, because they were the Lord's servants, the Lord was uh, so grateful to their service. Now the Lord said, um, I'm ready to lop off my arm for uh, the mistake. So he was ready to take responsibility for the mistake of his servants. Hmm? Okay. Yes, Raghur. Lord was grateful to Mother Draupadi. Mm. That how she actually you know, uh, immediately brought, I mean, uh, cut out the part of her sari and... Uh, right. And so the, the Lord reciprocated. Okay, reciprocated. good. Huh? Bali, Bali Maharaj, Lord was grateful to Bali Maharaj that he be, agreed to become his doorkeeper. Okay, and how he reciprocated? He agreed, he became doorkeeper. Of okay, Bali okay, fine. Any other examples? Uh, yes, uh, Ramsar. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, fine. He was grateful to Vibhishan. Yes. Okay, Shamsun. I mean, Sundar. Hmm. Okay, yes, he was grateful to Amrish Maharaj. Any other? There's one very prominent example where the Lord did something very wonderful to reciprocate. Okay. Okay, okay, yes. In the third canto, as uh, Uddhav is recollecting the various pastimes of the Lord. He recollects one pastime and in that where the Lord shows gratitude and in that purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, the Lord is never an ingrate to his devotees. Yes, that's right. Sandipani Muni. So he expressed gratitude to Sandipani Muni by bringing his dead son back. So we, we find that that Lord himself has this quality of gratitude. And of course, there's so many other examples, even in the Chaitanya Jatambat, you can see. So uh, 
So what is the importance of this quality of gratitude for us as practicing devotees and how can we develop this quality? What is the importance? First of all, what is the importance of this quality for us? Um, okay, we'll, we'll come back to you. Okay, Yulsha. How? Because if one is grateful, then whatever is coming in his life, he'll appreciate it, he'll, he'll, he'll take it in a positive spirit. Okay, yes, that's correct. So, so good qualities can develop if we have that quality. Yes, uh, some of the points. How, what is the role, what is the importance of gratitude in our lives? Okay, so none of If we are grateful, we will not take anything for granted in our life. And when we don't take it for granted, we make the best use of it. Be it association of devotees around or the, the opportunity to practice bhakti in our lives. No, okay. off no offenses happen and we make swift progress also. Okay, if we are grateful, then we will we'll not take things for granted. We will value, we'll value everything that we have received. Okay. Prabhuji, online devotees? Yes, please go ahead. Prabhuji, when we will be grateful, we'll always be humble that we know that these, these qualities or these things are given by the Lord. And uh, uh, they, they, whenever the Lord wants, he will uh, take it away from us. Whenever mm. he wants to give, he will give us. So we will always be in a humble position and we'll always try to be in the mood of trying to be the servant of the servant, Prabhuji. Okay, very good point. So humility, I mean, gratitude will lead to humility that actually I don't deserve all this, but the Lord has causelessly given these things. So one will always remain in humble mood. Good point. Thank you. Any other, any, anybody else online? No. Okay, go ahead. Uh, if we are grateful, then only we'll have proper uh, service attitude also. Mm -hmm. Because gratitude leads to uh, that feeling of being indebted. And then one wants to actually give himself, offer himself to serve more and more. Okay, so, so acts like a fuel. Let's say. Okay, the when one is grateful, then one will have the proper service attitude because one one wants to repay. One wants to repay if one is grateful, repay for what one has received, and so one will develop the right service attitude. Good point. So some other points. Um, Sona Gurmur. Grateful heart always counts blessings. Mm. An ungrateful heart only complains. Yes. So we can count up blessings. We can be grateful for what we have received. Mm. Right. Something else? Ram sir. I recently read a quote by Radhanath Swami Maharaj. Mm. He mentioned a grateful heart is a humble heart. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yes, if one is grateful, one can be humble. That's right. Shamji Gratitude makes the heart fertile to receive bhakti. Mm -hmm. What's the connection? Uh, in that, uh, because one, one is ready to reciprocate for whatever he's getting. And in that way, that uh, service attitude also increases. And then he can, in, uh, this increases bhakti. Because bhakti is loving relationship, basically. Okay. So it makes the heart fertile for receiving bhakti. Okay, very good point. Yes, Toshan, am I approved? Okay, so, so the devotee, if he's grateful, he understands whether it's happiness, misery, every situation is for my benefit. Okay, he takes it in the right attitude, right spirit. Very good point. Um, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So one who is ungrateful is always miserable in general. Why do you say that? But what's your understanding? Bulu? What's your understanding? Why one who is ungrateful is always miserable? Mm. Yes, that's a good point. So if one is, yeah, so if one is ungrateful, then one will always demand more and more. Yes. And if 
one does not get, then one will be frustrated and miserable. That's right. Ah, yes, Dishan. So, अगर कोई जो grateful नहीं है, तो उसका demand ज़्यादा रहता है. मिस्सा भी जो बोल रहे हैं उसका conclusion है, है ना? तो वो satisfied नहीं रहता है, always demand. तो फिर कोई authority बन गया और सब आर्डिनेट से वो फिर समझ समझ जाओ वो सेट वो ग्रेट फुल नहीं है कि सबसे तुमने ये नहीं किया इसने ये नहीं किया वो मॉर्निंग में नहीं आया वो सोया नहीं खाया नहीं तो अलविस तो वो अथॉरिटी का रहता है कि ये लोग ऐसे ही ये करते ही नहीं तो फिर उसे क्या समझना चाहिए वो सेटिस्फाइड है या नहीं है अथॉरिटी हो सबॉर्डिनेट हो छोटा वक्त हो बड़ा वक्त हो सबके लिए लागू होता है ना हाँ सबके लिए होता है लेकिन कंप्लेन अब जो बोल रहे हैं ना कि जो विवेक शाम को बोल रहे थे कि जो ग्रेटफुल नहीं वो अलवेस कंप्लेन करता है करेक्ट करेक्ट पॉइंट वही है जो भी हो ओके सुंदर शाम प्रो यू वांट which is very conducive for spiritual practices. Otherwise also, and also it is offense-free zone completely. It will be very conducive. That's why it is said the attitude of gratitude decides one's altitude. How mm. high you are in spiritual life is decided by how grateful you are. And because everything we receive in life, so to say good or bad, is all arrangement of the Lord coming through this person, that person is mm. immaterial. Mm. It's the instrument of our karma only. Mm. So if you are grateful, that means you accept honestly that I was a culprit, I have done misdeeds. So I'm just getting the due. In fact, our Lord is reducing. So this gratitude is very conducive as uh, Toshan Nima Pro also yes. indicating. Yes, good. Thank you. That was a good uh, conclusion. The attitude of gratitude decides our altitudes. Good, that was a good conclusive point. So how can we develop this quality? A few points on that. How can we develop or how can we increase this quality? Hmm. When we think about contemplate, hmm. then we, we can understand. Uh, and also being in the association of those who are grateful. Okay, good point. So if we are if we contemplate on the benefits of gratitude, that's what we have been doing now. We have been discussing on the benefits, why to be grateful. So if we contemplate, discuss this. Then we'll try to develop it also. Good point. Somebody else say yes. So much. That Shila Prabhupada the right in Ajamila section that uh, one should always remember that what life I was living before mm. and how I've saved now in Krishna consciousness. Mm. So in this way, we'll be remain always grateful. In the yes, good point. Yes, if we have uh, Prabhupada writes that one should always remember what was my condition before, what's my condition now, who is responsible, who has saved me. So one can always contemplate on that. Some other points, Mr. Raghav. So it's basically, uh, we should be, gratitude is an aspect of knowledge. So becoming aware. So uh, reflecting on the blessings, what we are receiving. Mm. So being aware of actually just the matter of accepting the reality, how we have been blessed by so many you know, ways. So uh, counting on those blessings, that's how we could become. Grateful. Yes. So remembering the blessings, all the wonderful things that we received. Yes. Then we can be grateful. Yeah, bro, almost same point that uh, we should always remember that whenever I had crisis in crisis in my spiritual life, then who are devotees helped me in my spiritual life, and we should always uh, keep those devotees in our heart, and uh, know that I could not have been standing like this in my life if these devotees would not have com contributed like that. Yes, so contemplating on all the benefits we received, and ultimately, definitely understanding how the Supreme Lord, through so many different agents, has. Uh, given me so many benefits, so many wonderful things for my practice of devotional service. Let's go to the next verse. Text 9. No nam vimushta matayastava mayate yetvam bhavapya yavimokshanam anyaheto archanti kalpa taruktarum kunapopa bhogyam ichanti yatsparshajam nirayepi niranam Translation. 
9 persons who worship you simply for the sense gratification of this bag of skin are certainly influenced by your illusory energy in spite of having you who are like a desire tree and are the cause of liberation from birth and death foolish persons such as me desire benedictions from you for sense gratification which is available even for those who live in hellish conditions mm -hmm. so he is referring to so the previous verse spoke about the three kinds of mixed devotees artho jignasu and gyani this verse speaks about the artharthi devotee and dhruva maharaj is referring to himself that i have been the artharthi bhakta and who simply worship you for the sake of sense gratification and he calls and he says that such person as vimushta matayah they have lost their intelligence um by tava maya by the influence of your illusory energy and so therefore um and therefore in spite of having you who are like a desire tree so you are like a desire tree kalpaka tarum so you are like a desire tree you are ready to give anything so you are ready to give prema you are ready to give material benefits anything you are ready to give but i have been so foolish that i desired simply sense gratification for this bag of skin and so in this way here dhruv maharaj is uh, condemning himself and he is repenting that he asked for material material sense gratification in spite of having the opportunity to get prema so he says that uh, this sort of sense gratification is available niraye niraye here proper translates it as who live in hellish conditions also referring to the hogs who are living in almost like hellish conditions such abominable conditions so he is referring to the hogs and dogs who live in hellish conditions sense gratification is available even to them but i asked for that type of sense gratification so in this way he is condemning himself mm. Text ten. Ya nevritas tanu britam tava pa da padma dhyana bhava janakata shravane navasya sa brahmani swa mahimani api natha mahbhut kimtva antakasi lulita patatham vimanat. My Lord, the transcendental bliss derived from meditating upon your lotus feet. or hearing about your glories from pure devotees is so unlimited that it is far beyond the stage of brahmananda wherein one thinks himself merged in the impersonal brahman as one with the supreme since brahmananda is also defeated by the transcendental bliss derived from devotional service then what to speak of the temporary blissfulness of elevating oneself to the heavenly planets which is ended by the separating sword of time although one may be elevated to the heavenly planets he falls down in due course of time okay so in the previous verse dhruva maharaj said bhavapyaya vimokshanam he said that my dear lord you are capable of liberating one from bhava apyaya from the cycle of birth and death so then the next question arises if you are able to give free one from the cycle of birth and death and give liberation so then does it mean that one merges into the impersonal brahman vishnu chakravarti writes since you mentioned that lord gives freedom from birth and death as a result of worship lord must be um so one must be merging in brahman since this is devoid of enjoyment of the material body so he's saying in the previous verse he said that you you are actually capable of giving liberation so liberation means one merges into the impersonal brahman that must be the result of worshiping you so that is what he is uh, so that's the that's the link between the previous verse and this verse so dhruva maharaj says no that is so so that is not what i am desiring for i am not desiring for merging into the impersonal brahman rather i am desiring pure devotional service meditating on the lotus feet hearing about your glories dhyanat bhava janakatha shravanena so tava pada padma dhyanat so what i desire is meditating on your lotus feet hearing about your glories and that is the happiness one derives by that is much higher than brahmananda or merging into the impersonal brahman so that is what i am desiring 
and 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 then what to speak of those who who want to go to the heavenly planets as far as they are concerned kimtva antakasi lulitat patatam vimanat so just like um the airplanes when the fuel is exhausted they fall down so similarly those who go to the heavenly planets ultimately when the five spirits are exhausted they have to come down so uh, dhruva maharaj is saying that is not what i'm i'm desiring i'm not desiring going to the heavenly planets or merging into the impersonal brahman but i am desiring simply to meditate on your lotus feet and hear about your wonderful qualities because the happiness one derives by that is much higher than brahmananda so you can see proper this referring to that in his purport the transcendental bliss derived from devotional service primarily from shravanam kirtanam hearing and chanting cannot be compared to the happiness derived by karmis by elevating themselves to the heavenly planets or by gyanis or yogis who enjoy oneness with the supreme impersonal brahman the lord can give relief from the chain of birth and death it is a misunderstanding to think as to the monist that when one gets relief from the process of birth and death he merges into the supreme brahman here it is clearly said that the transcendental bliss derived from shravanam kirtanam by pure devotees cannot be compared to brahmananda or the impersonal conception of transcendental bliss derived by merging into the absolute so that is why we were hearing the other day that radha shambhu was speaking about how prithu maharaj prithu maharaj in his prayers he is praying that i don't want to this impersonal liberation rather i want millions of years in order to hear the wonderful glories of the lord so that is what the devotee desires in the next paragraph prabhu is speaking about uh, the position of the karmis who want to go to the heavenly planets chine punye markilokam vishanti so those are the last line of the purport those are elevated to the heavenly planets are like airplanes which drop when they run out of fuel so just on the point of uh, we were discussing about gratitude in the previous verse a very important example is uh, the example of arjuna when the lord disappeared from this earth so that time we see arjuna recollecting all the past times and all the various uh, incidents when the lord helped them hmm? big list he is giving of all the various incidents so one important purport i thought of just showing that okay you already have it and just show the title and as a reference please read you alone uh, wait 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 go go ahead go ahead sorry hmm yes yes the power and energy which were bestowed upon arjuna were required for fulfillment of the mission of the lord but when his mission was fulfilled the emergency powers were withdrawn from arjuna because the astounding powers of arjuna which were astonishing even even to the denizens of heaven were no longer required and they were not meant for going back home back to godhead if endowment of powers and withdrawal of powers by the lord are possible even for a great devotee like arjuna or even the demigods in the heaven then what to speak of the ordinary living beings who are but figs compared to such great souls the lesson is therefore that no one should be puffed up for his powers borrowed from the lord the same man should rather feel of life to the lord for such benefaction benefactions and must utilize such power for the service of the lord such power can be withdrawn at any time by the lord so the best use of such power and opulence is to engage them in the service of the lord yes so there is an important lesson that shri prabhu is saying here so if one is not grateful for what one has received the powers the benedictions one has received from the lord if one is not grateful what will happen they'll be taken away at any point of time and so therefore prabhu is writing here the same man should rather feel obliged to the lord for such benefactions and must utilize such power for the service of the lord so if we are grateful for what we have received then we will utilize them properly in the service of the lord and uh, not be proud about them in another purpose of prabhupada writes one not, one must not be proud of borrowed plumes so everything what we have is all borrowed nothing is ours in one lecture shri prabhupada is saying if the lord does not will not one word will come out of my mouth not one word it's a fact so what can we do what can we do at any at any moment if there is paralysis vocal cords hand leg anything can get paralyzed at any at any moment then what can we do we may be proud we can do so many wonderful things but unless the lord allows us what can we do so therefore if we are grateful then we will remain humble and we will use whatever we have in the service of the lord okay 
So yes, that's an important point here. Okay, so therefore, the Lord is, uh, I mean, Dhruva Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj is saying, I don't want this uh, merging into the impersonal Brahman or going to the heavenly planets, but I simply want devotional service. But how can devotional service be performed? Devotional service can only be performed in the association of devotees. And so therefore, in the next verse, he is praying to the Lord for the association of devotees. And so we have this famous verse, the 11th verse. Bhakti muhu pravahatam tvai me prasango bhuya dananta mahatam amala ashayanam yenan jasol banam rubyasanam bhavabdhim neshe bhavad gunakatam ritapan mattaha. Dhruva Maharaj continued, O unlimited Lord, kindly bless me so that I may associate with great devotees who engage in your transcendental loving service constantly. At the waves of a river constantly flow. Such transcendental devotees are completely situated in an uncontaminated state of life. By the process of devotion service, I shall surely be able to cross the nuisance ocean of material existence, which is full with the waves of blazing fire like dangers. It will be very easy for me, for I am becoming mad to hear about your transcendental qualities and pastimes, which are eternally existent. So very, very important purport. Practically every sentence here is extremely important, filled with so much of meaning. So you can kindly read the purport, please. The significant point in the in Dhruvamara's statement is that he wanted the association of pure devotees. The transcendental devotion service cannot be complete and cannot be relishable without the association of devotees. We have therefore established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Anyone who is trying to be aloof from this Krishna consciousness society and yet engage in Krishna consciousness is living in a great hallucination, hallucination. But this is not possible. From this statement by Dhruva Maharaj, it is clear that unless one is associated with the devotees, his devotional service does not mature, does not become distinct from material activities. The Lord says, Satam Prasangan Mamavir Sambhido Bhavanti Hrutkarna Rasayana. Only in the association of pure devotees can the words of Lord Krishna be fully potent and relishable to the heart and hear. Dhruva Maharaj explicitly wanted the association of devotees. That association in devotion service is just like the waves of an incessantly flowing river. In our Krishna conscious society, we have full engagement 24 hours a day. Every moment of our time is busily is always busily engaged in the service of the Lord. This is called the incessant flow of devotional service. Okay, so we'll just discuss a few points here before we go ahead. So here we find Srila Prabhupada is mentioning that how here Dhruva Maharaj, he, he's directly seeing the Supreme Lord. He's right in front of the Supreme Lord, but yet he's praying for the association of devotees. Srila Prabhupada is writing here, transcendental devotional service cannot be complete and cannot be relishable without the association of devotees. Somebody would like to explain the statement, please. Yes, Antudip. So Sadhu Sangha forms the foundation to the entire process of devotion service. And as one goes ahead in the stages of devotion service, Sadhu Sangha just expands and becomes deeper. So it doesn't be transcendental loving service cannot be complete without Sadhu Sangha first being manifest and cannot be relishable also. Devotees discuss with each other the transcendental uh, activities of the Lord. So that makes it uh, very relishable. Yes. So okay, good. Good. Thank you. Wonderful points. Somebody would like to add to that? How devotional service cannot be complete and relishable without the association of devotees? Hmm. Okay, yes, Ram Singh. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Object of worship is Lord, no? Achha. 
Correct. Correct. Good point. Yes. So, Lord is never separated. So, serving the Lord means serving His devotees, being in the association of devotees. Okay. Good point. Um, okay. You have the mic there. So, same thing. What Nirgaz Ramsey was telling that so uh, many of the angas like hearing from uh, pure devotees or even uh, means where we accept a spiritual master also so taking shelter of this pure devotee also. So, so many. As per the devotional service, actually it depends when we have devotees with us. So, and as Prabhu is saying, the Lord considers the worship of a devotee more important than his own. So that way, uh, that becomes complete only when we have devotees. Yes. Otherwise, it is not possible that way. So this is only applicable for sadhakas, right? No, it's for all Prabhuji. Because Achha. that principle remains uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. Means No, when one is advanced, one can do alone also, isn't it? No, but how will he please the Lord by serving a devotee? Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody was telling some example. Ha, bolo. Ha, Bharat Maharaj. What happened to Bharat Maharaj? Hmm. Ah, yes. I, yesterday we were saying it's good. It's good everyone speaks in mic because if we, you don't speak in mic, then those online devotees will think why why there is silence for some time in between. There are pauses in between. That's how they will perceive. So, so Bharat Maharaj's case, like if some devotees are there with Bharat Maharaj, then we will tell that uh, this is wrong. Correct. Very important point. Hmm? The example of Bharat Maharaj. Prabhupada writes in the purport to 5.12.14. Very important purport. Prabhupada writes that unless, the reason why Bharat Maharaj fell down was because he did not have the association of a spiritual master. So... So even somebody who's so elevated as Bharat Maharaj on the platform, Bhava, but still the cause of his fall down was because there was no one to correct him at the right time. So therefore the association is always important. And therefore we find even the six Goswamis were always associating with each other <clears throat> in the courtyard of the Radha Dhamma, the temple, the six Goswamis were also associating with each other. So yes, so devotional service cannot be complete and relishable without the association of devotees. We have therefore established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Anyone who's trying to be aloof from this Krishna Conscious Society and yet engage in Krishna Consciousness is living in a great hallucination for this is not possible. So therefore one cannot think that I can practice devotional service without the association of devotees, without the ISKCON society. So it is not possible. Prabhupada is very clearly saying it is impossible. So therefore, there is no need to make any experiments with the words of the founder Acharya. So it is very clear. And also Prabhupada is saying, unless one is associated with devotees, his devotional service does not mature. It does not become distinct from material activities. Somebody would like to explain this? How it becomes distinct from material activities by being in the association. It'll be nice if everyone participates. So, otherwise we're seeing the same devotees participating. So everyone can participate. It's not that there is a absolute right and absolute wrong and one will be punished for wrong answers. So everyone can contribute. Everyone, all our senior devotees here, you can contribute your wonderful realizations. And online devotees also. How many are online? Huh? 21 devotees are online. Hare Krishna, all online devotees, we are kindly requesting for your valuable contributions and participation. Okay, so 
can somebody like uh, can i like speak bro yes yes please who who's that satyapriya das yes yes please go ahead prabhu ji unless like no in the association of devotees we understand <clears throat> what is exactly material and what is exactly spiritual mm. when we are in the material circle we hardly able to distinguish if i am doing my spiritual life or not mm. but in association yes that makes us like no we are always discussing this is material this is spiritual so that mm. naturally we are always trying to take shelter of the spiritual things right right very good point yes very good point yes so if we are not in the association then we may be performing material activities but our mind may justify that no it's all right it is spiritual but when we are in the association just like bharat maharaj again the same example so bharat maharaj was thinking everything is going fine no problem uh, but if there was some devotee with him then devotee would have, may have reminded him mm, this attachment to the dear is becoming too much mm. so somebody would have cautioned him so therefore only in because as we were discussing in a previous class also on one's own it is very difficult to find out whether i am on the proper spiritual path or material path the mind will always justify because the mind is influenced by the modes mind will justify so therefore only in the association then one somebody will be there to who is there to guide us then they can see whether we are on the proper path whether we are performing spiritual activities material activities and that's how then we stick to the spiritual path then that's how the devotional service can become mature right okay okay fine please can you reading next paragraph read read ah, okay so uh, uh, mayavadi mayavadi philosopher may question us you may be very happy in the association of devotees but what is your plan for crossing the ocean of material existence dhru maharaj answer is that it is not very difficult he clearly says that this ocean can be crossed very easily if one simply becomes mad to hear the glories of the lord bhavat guna katha for anyone who persistently eager engages in hearing the topics of the lord from shrimad bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam and chaitanya charitamrit and who is actually addicted to this process just as one becomes addicted to intoxicants it is very easy to cross the nescience of material existence the ocean of material nescience is compared to the blazing fire but to a devotee this blazing fire is insignificant because he is completely absorbed in devotional service although the material world is blazing fire to a devotee it appears full of pleasure visham purna sukhayati yes so so the mayavadis were very interested in liberation getting out so if the question may be raised okay you very happy over here in the association of devotees but what about crossing the ocean of material existence getting liberated so so the answer is that yes liberation is just a by product for a devotee that is automatically going to happen hmm? and so therefore the devotee is so absorbed in the glories of the lord as prahlad maharaj says what is prahlad maharaj say tvad virya gayana mahamrita magna chitta i am totally absorbed in the wonderful past times of the lord and so therefore i am not interested in liberation hmm? but i am more interested in all these other people who are who are engrossed in material activities so therefore when the devotee is engrossed in shravanam kirtanam and the activities of devotional service so he is hardly affected by the miseries of the material world and therefore liberation is not his goal he is absorbed in this in this uh, in devotional service even in this material world in the association of devotees so therefore i was just hearing a lecture shil prabha shil prabha was saying the devotee understands that whatever activities i am performing here in the association of devotees same activities i am going to perform in vaikuntha also what is the difference so therefore the devotee doesn't even actually desire to go back to vaikuntha because he is happy here in the association of devotees hearing chanting performing devotional activities and so therefore that is how all the material world is a blazing fire to a devotee it is vishwam purna sukhayate because he is totally absorbed in devotional activities therefore he does not even experience the miseries of the material worlds hmm? and therefore and of course the liberation becomes a by product for a devotee hmm? mukti muklita anjali sevate asman propad very often quoted from bilman thakur and the last paragraph please the purport of this of this statement by dhru maharaj is that devotional service in the association of devotees is the cause of the development of further devotional service by devotional service only one is elevated to the transcendental plan to golok vrindavan and there also there is only devotional service for the activities of devotional service both in this world and in the spiritual world are one and the same 
devotional service does not change the example of a mango can be given here if one gets unripe mango it is still a mango and when it is ripe ripe it is remains the same mango but it has become more tasteful and relishable similarly there is devotional service performed according to the direction of the spiritual master and the injunctions of the regulative principles of the shastra and there is devotional service in the spiritual world rendered directly in the association with the supreme personality of godhead but they are both the same there is no change the difference is that one stage is unripe and the other is ripe and more relishable it is possible to mature in devotional service only in the association of devotees okay so this is a famous example of the unripe mango and the ripe mango so both are both are mango whether it's devotional service here or devotional service in the spiritual world but the difference is in the spiritual world or in spiritual consciousness it becomes more relishable because one is uh, one is in the right consciousness one is performing for the pleasure of the lord and here of course uh, when one is on the sadhana platform then um, then one is one is still performing the same devotional activity same devotional service but because of our various conditionings and so on there could be various impediments but ultimately we have to understand that if we remain connected if we remain connected to the association of devotees then that's how the devotional service can become right more relishable the important point is to re remain in the association of devotees okay so go next one here this is vishnu achuk dagur's commentary on the verse please read bhakti composed of hearing and chanting will not be sweet without proper association therefore draw praise for the association of those who continually perform bhakti but then he will start you can always read those sanskrit words pravahatam pravahatam continually perform prava pravaha like the flowing of a river right so in the association of devotees therefore prabhat is writing here the devotional service is supposed to flow like a river therefore he's saying in our movement there is 24 hours engagement in devotional service so the devotional service continuously flows without any impediment okay but then he will still have fear of ocean of suffering caused by samsara raising his, his hands in pride dhruva speaks i will overpower the terrible ocean of material life full of countless pains by the strength of that association let it come before me let us see nothing is impossible for me i will be drunk with the tasting the nectar of your qualities and pastimes the qualities of material life such as rivalry ignorance and hatred cannot make this drunkard suffer mm -hmm. even death cannot touch the person who has drunk immortal nectar by bhakti produced from association with devotees one directly meets the lord then one again prays for association with devotees this indicates that bhakti in the form of association with devotees is the cause of bhakti and bhakti is the result of bhakti thus this verse states the opinion of the devotees okay so in this way dhruva maharaj is saying the suffering doesn't matter even let even death come no problem i will be absorbed in devotional service in the association of devotees so we find this association of devotees is a very very important principle in the practice of devotional service in nectar of instruction rupa goswami speaks about it twice in the second and third verse so we just thought of showing some important quotes of shila prabhupad from the chaitanya charitamrita and when he describes to rupa goswami about the growth of the bhakti lata in that connection shila prabhupada has given some very very important purports and instructions for devotees please read i don't think it's a smaller font maybe somebody in front can read it. a little smaller it looks like keeping up the company of non devotees while the bhakti kripa is growing the devotee must protect it by fencing it all around the neophyte devotee must be protected by being surrounded by pure devotees in this way he will not give the maddened elephant a chance to uproot his bhakti kripa when one associates with non devotees the maddened elephant is set loose shri chatan mahaprabhu has said asat sang tyaga ai vaishnava achar chatan tamil madhya lila 22.8 the first business of a vaishnava is to give up the company of non devotees a so called mature devotee however commits a great offense by giving up the company of hmm yeah okay. a so called mature devotee however commits a great of hmm are a previous one why you change a so called mature devotee however commits a great offense by giving up the company of pure devotees the human being is a social animal and if one gives up the society of pure devotees he must associate with non devotees asat sanga 
by contacting non devotees and engaging in non devotional activities a so called mature devotee will fall victim to the mad elephant offense whatever growth has taken place is quickly uprooted by such an offense one should therefore be very careful to defend the creeper by fencing it in that is by following the regulative principles and associating with pure devotees so the bhakti lata has to be fenced and what is the fencing the fencing is these two things following the regulative principles so which are the regulative principles 64 angas of bhakti regulative principles are not the four prohibitions that those are not regulated regulative principles of bhakti means 64 regulative principles and associating with pure devotees this is the fencing so uh, shri prabhupad very in, in this purport has used at least two three times he spoken about uh, associating with pure devotees so who's a pure devotee do we have pure devotees around or very difficult to find them what's your understanding yes bro uh, those who are fo- following the pure message of the spiritual master they are on the path of uh, becoming pure devotees yes so that's what krishna skavraj goswami says anyone who is following the path of pure devotional service is a pure devotee right so anyone who is sincerely following is to be considered a pure devotee when shri prabhupada was asked how many pure devotees are there in the moment he said how, how many devotees are there that many pure devotees so so we have the great fortune of being surrounded by so many pure devotees so this is our great opulence great opulence that we are surrounded by so many pure devotees brother is writing the neophyte devotee must be protected by being surrounded by pure devotees so just see the great uh, gift that shri prabhupada has given us that we are being surrounded by so many pure devotees and thus our bhakti lata is being protected by being surrounded by pure devotees and what is the result of that he will not give the maddened elephant a chance to uproot the bhakti creeper so what is the connection between this associating with devotees associating with non devotees and the mad elephant what is the connection between these three somebody would like to explain hare krishna prabhu ji yes prabhu <coughs> ji <coughs> so uh, so when we associate with materialists then our material desires will increase and uh, we will have a material outlook towards even devotional service and devotees so that mm. is how there is a connection that if we have association of non devotees then uh, this material outlook will develop and then the mad elephant offense will happen of aprad towards devotees yes that's right as prabhat says here when one associates with non devotees the mad elephant is set loose so do we associate with non devotees or what is the what are the ways in which there is a possibility of associating with non devotees what are what are the possible ways in which one could associate with non devotees while living in the association of devotees question is clear yes sir can i say kuch ah yes please go ahead our mind is right now at immature stage it's a materialist mm. yes one thing is association with our own minds and all the various uh, materialistic desires of the mind that's yes that's one way in which we could associate with non devotees what else yes sir instead of uh, doing the right kind of jigyasas to advance in krishna consciousness one can have wrong kind of curiosities and jigyasas mm-hmm. which may be mundane mm-hmm. so that way even though he may be surrounded but he will actually catch the wrong vibrations only because of his Only. okay so he has a wrong inquisitiveness and what is it you to do to fulfill that you said he has a wrong inquisitiveness right so and then what does he do to fulfill that and then he does puzzle for that he gets into okay so okay mundane talk okay what else yes yogendra prabhu 
social media what happens okay through through social media internet we could get influenced by so many materialistic vibrations that's correct hmm what else what are other ways in which one can be influenced by asat sang while remaining in the association of devotees what is one important source of association Shilaprabhupada's books. books, books. So we have the opportunity for right association through these books, or we could, in the name of preaching, read so many other books and uh, get the wrong association. Because when one reads any book, one is actually associating with the author. Mm -hmm. And we have seen cases like this where devotees, in the name of preaching, when went on to read so many other books from the outside worlds and then after some years they said i think so these other authors are better than shila prabhupada mm -hmm. prabhupada speaks very simply so that's what happens so therefore one has to be very careful otherwise the maddened elephant is set loose and so therefore prabhupada says here the first business of a vaishnav is to give up the company of non devotees Shri Prabhupada in this purport uses this phrase very often, a so-called mature devotee. Prabhupada used this phrase very often in these purports here in the CC. So, a so-called mature devotee. Somebody who's neophyte, somebody who's new, he's usually very careful. He thinks, anyways, I'm new, let me be careful. So he's usually very careful to follow everything nicely. And somebody who's actually mature, he's also always serious, he's also always careful, because the actually mature devotee, he always remains humble. He never thinks I'm advanced, I'm mature. So he's also careful. The problem comes with whom? The person in between, the so-called mature devotee. So he's not actually mature, but he imagines himself to be mature. And therefore, then he lands up in problem. Then he thinks, okay, sab kuch chalta hai. so then he gives up the company of uh, devotees and then he can uh, get into wrong zones. And then by contacting non-devotees, engaging in non-devotional activities, again, Prabhupada says, a so-called mature devotee will fall victim to the mad elephant offense. And so therefore, one has to be extremely careful about one's association. And another very important purport. Next one. Okay, read. Even if one thinks that there are many pseudo-devotees or non-devotees in the Krishna consciousness society, Still, one should stick to the society. If one thinks the society's members are not pure devotees, one can keep direct company with the spiritual master. And if there is any doubt, one should consult the spiritual master. However, unless one follows the spiritual master's instructions concerning the regulative principles and chanting and hearing the holy name of the Lord, one cannot become a pure devotee. By one's mental con concoctions, one falls down. By associating with non-devotees, one breaks the regulative principles and is thereby lost. So you can see how Srila Prabhupada is emphasizing so much on remaining within ISKCON. He's saying that even if one thinks, it's not reality, but even if one thinks that there are only pseudo-devotees or non-devotees within ISKCON, Still, Prabhupada says one must stick to the society. Still, one must not leave. And we know how His Honest Bhakti Charasama Maharaj would often repeat that instruction which he received from Srila Prabhupada, never leave ISKCON. Because as Srila Prabhupada himself said, it's the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna himself has taken birth in this movement. So the movement is extremely potent and powerful. And so therefore, there are many quotes like this, but here this is a very prominent one. Meshila Prabhupada says that even if one thinks that everyone is pseudo-devotee, non-devotee, still one must not leave. And okay, one thinks nobody is worth associating with, okay, at least one person you associate with your spiritual master. But then follow his instructions. 
otherwise by one's mental concoctions one falls down so by associating with non devotees one breaks the regulatory principles and is thereby lost another important quote in the same series next mm. one who is actually serious about advancing in devotional service should desire only to satisfy the previous acharyas ichhay gosai yara muvi tara das one should always think of oneself as a servant of the servant of the acharyas and thinking this one should live in the society of vaishnavas however if one thinks that he has become very mature and can live separate from the association association of vaishnavas and thus gives up all the regulatory principles due to offending a vaishnava one's position becomes very dangerous offenses against the holy name are explained in adi lila chapter 8 verse 24 giving up the regulative principles and living according to one's whims is compared to a mad elephant which by force uproots the bhakti lata and breaks it into pieces in this way the bhakti lata shrivels up such an offense is especially created when one disobeys the instructions of the spiritual master this is called guru avagnya the devotee must therefore be very careful not to commit offenses against the spiritual master by disobeying his instructions as soon as one is deviated from the instructions of the spiritual master the uprooting of the bhakti lata begins and gradually all the leaves dry up okay so in the association of devotees what must be the attitude with which one lives servant of the servant of the acharyas and thinking like this one should live in the society of vaishnavas so again propal says if one thinks that he has become very mature that's always the problem if one thinks he has become mature then that's a problem then he thinks no need of association then he can give up following the instructions of the spiritual master and then all the problems begin okay so in this way shri prabhupada has given great emphasis on being in the association of devotees and what to do in the association of devotees okay read giving up the company of non devotees hmm. by the grace by the grace of the spiritual master and krishna one nourishes the bhakti lata by regularly sprinkling it with the water of shravana kirtan hearing and chanting in this way the seed of bhakti lata sprouts and grows up and material universe grows up and grows, up through the whole universe grows up and up through the whole universe until it penetrates the covering of the material universe and reaches the spiritual world the bhakti lata continues to grow until it reaches the topmost planetary system goloka rindavan where krishna lives there the creepers take shelter of the lotus feet of the lord and that is and that is its final destination at that time the creeper begins to grow the fruits of ecstatic love of god it is the duty of the devotee who nourishes the creeper to be very careful it is said that the watering of the creeper must continue iha mali sheche nitya shravanaadi jad it is not that at a certain stage one can stop chanting and hearing and become a mature devotee if one stops one certainly falls down from devotional service although one may be very much exalted in devotional service he should not give up the watering process of shravan kirtana if one gives up that process it is due to an offense okay so in the association of devotees one must water the bhakti lata by the process of shravanam and kirtanam so just like the plant how long the plant requires watering yes throughout the life any point the water is not there it's bound to dry up so therefore uh, as prabhupada says here if one stops one certainly falls down from devotional service so it is not that at a certain stage one can stop chanting and hearing and become a mature devotee so at no point of time one can stop but one can one should always continue the shravan and kirtan in the association of devotees although one may be very much exalted in devotional service very much exalted but still he should not give up the watering process of shravan kirtan and one could give up because of an offense Okay, fine. So uh, we'll take a break here and continue with the next class. All right, Krishna.
ये चान वद सुत सुरद गृह वित्त दार ये ध्वजना बधिया पदार विंद सौगंध्य लुब्ध हृदय सुत प्रसंग ट्रांसलेशन ओ लॉर्ड हु हैव अ लोटस नेवल इफ अ पर्सन हैपेंस टू एसोसिएट विद अ डिवोटी हुज हार्ट ऑलवेज हैंकर्स आफ्टर योर लोटस फीट सीकिंग ऑलवेज देयर फ्रेगरेंस ही इज नेवर अटैच्ड टू द मटेरियल बॉडी और इन अ बॉडी रिलेशनशिप टू ऑफस्प्रिंग फ्रेंड्स होम वेल्थ एंड वाइफ व्हिच आर वेरी वेरी डियर टू मटेरियलिस्टिक पर्संस इंडीड ही डज नॉट केयर फॉर देम यस सो इफ समबडी बिकम्स अटैच्ड टू द लॉर्ड इन द एसोसिएशन ऑफ डिवोटीज देन he loses attachment to suta surat griha vitta dara so all this he loses attachment to all these materialistic things and materialistic people so prabhat says a special advantage in devotional service is devotees not only enjoy the transcendental pastimes of the lord by hearing and chanting and glorifying them but also are not very much attached to their bodies unlike the yogis for the now he says from the very beginning therefore without wasting time in bodily exercises a devotee searches out a pure devotee and simply by his association becomes more advanced in spiritual consciousness than any yogi because a devotee knows that he is not the body he is never affected by bodily happiness or distress now in the last sentence this status of life is possible only when a person is interested in associating with a pure devotee who always enjoys the fragrance of the lotus feet of the lord so vishnu chakravarti writes that destruction of sansara is a secondary effect of bhakti unsought by the devotees so that means basically liberation liberation or destruction of sansara that is a secondary effect which automatically comes by Uh, when one performs devotional service even if the devotee is not seeking that he automatically gets that that's a by product so then the next question can be asked so dhruva maharaj is saying so if one one performs devotional service then one loses taste for all these material things then why did dhruva maharaj still have attachment to getting this great kingdom greater than his great grandfather so in response to that he speaks the next verse teriya nagadvija saris sarispriha deva daitya मर्त्यादिपरिचित सदसदेषम अजते महदाद्यनेक नाथ परम परम वेद माय डियर लॉर्ड ओ सुप्रीम अनबॉर्न आई नो दैट द डिफरेंट वराइटीज ऑफ लिविंग एंटिटीज सच एज एनिमल्स ट्रीज बर्ड्स रिप्टाइल्स डेमिगॉल्स एंड ह्यूमन बींग्स आर स्प्रेड थ्रू आउट द यूनिवर्स which is caused by the total material energy and i know that they are sometimes manifest and sometimes unmanifest but i have never experienced the supreme form i behold as i see you now now all kinds of methods of theorizing have come to an end so he's saying that the reason is because i have experience of so many forms in this material world but till now i never had the experience of your form and therefore i was attracted to all these material things but now i have darshan of your form roopam swavishtam hmm. so now i have a darshan of your form so now of course i have no attraction for any of these other forms prabhupada writes the position of a living entity is to render service unless he comes to the stage of appreciating the supreme personality of godhead he engages in the service of the various forms of trees reptiles animals men demigods etc so unless one comes to that platform of devotional service then one will obviously perform service to so many other people because that is natural for a living entity it's natural for the living entity to love and serve so if he does not love and serve the supreme lord then obviously he has to love and serve so many other living entities so further down prabhat says when the lord touched his conscience to dhruva's forehead real knowledge was revealed from within and dhruva could understand the lord's transcendental form okay so therefore now he has lost all the taste for all material activities so then then the question is raised so now he says that now i have understood i have realized your form so then the lord says okay you have realized my form so can you describe my form so therefore in the next three verses dhruva maharaj describes the lord's form कल्पात एकखिल झटरे नग्रेन शेते पुमा स्वृग अनंतसकस्तदंके 
यन्ना भी सिंधु रुह कंचन लोक पद्म गर्भे दुमान भगवते प्रणतोस्मी तस्म My dear Lord, at the end of each millennium, the supreme personality of Godhead, Kabodakshay Vishnu, dissolves everything manifested within the universe into his belly. He lies down on the lap of Shesh Nag. From his navel sprouts a golden lotus flower on his stem, and on that lotus, Lord Brahma is created. I can understand. Your, I can understand that you are the supreme Godhead. I therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Okay, so here he is describing the Lord's beautiful form as uh, Garbhudaksha Vishnu, and so here he is describing the beautiful personal aspect of the Lord's form. Prabhupada writes towards the end of the purport. It said that anyone who has even a little of the Lord's grace can understand His glories. Others can go on speculating on the absolute truth, but they will always be unable to understand the truths. What is that verse? Prasad leshanu grihita evahi janati tatvam bhagwan mahimno. How does it start? Hmm? Athapite deva padam bujadvaya prasad leshanu grihita evahi. Yes. So unless one has a little bit of the Lord's grace, prasad, one cannot actually understand the Lord's glories. Unless one comes in contact with the devotee, it is not possible to understand the transcendental form or the spiritual world and its transcendental activities. so he continues to describe the supreme lord so in the previous verse he described the garbhodaksha vishnu and now in the next verse he describes about the super soul tvam nitya mukta parishuddha vibuddha atma kutastha adi purusho bhagavam stri atri triadishah yad bhutya avasthitam akhanditaya svadrishtya My dear Lord, by your unbroken transcendental glance, you are the supreme witness of all stages of intellectual activities. You are eternal, liberated. Your existence is situated in pure goodness, and you are existent in super soul without change. you are the original personality of godhead full with six opulences you are eternally the master of the three modes of material nature thus you are always different from the ordinary living entities as lord vishnu you maintain all the affairs of entire universe and yet you stand aloof and are the enjoyer of the results of all sacrifices yes yeah, so here is mentioning about the different qualities of the lord nitya mukta parishuddha vibuddha so he is mentioning all these various qualities and the purportional prabhupada is basically talking about the differences between the lord and the living entities okay so that's the main theme of this purport so having described about garbhudaksha vishnu then the super soul which is shrudaksha vishnu and in the next verse he describes now about the impersonal brahman hmm a uh, simple question uh, here he says you are the original personality of godhead mm. and uh, so how do we understand because he is not seeing the two handed form of sham sundar krishna so how do we understand this okay fine statement? so uh, because ultimately all these are plenary expansions of krishna only so therefore even if it is said that the mm, garbhudaksha vishnu or shrudaksha vishnu is the original personality of god there is nothing wrong because they are all personal expansions of uh, the same uh, sham sundar krishna and they are all because they are all uh, having the same qualities so therefore there is not much difference between the two and also um as far as the material world is concerned and all the affairs of this universe which he is essentially referring to you maintain all the affairs of the universe and so on so it is mainly the vishnus who are doing this work in relation to the material worlds and so therefore you find in many purport shila prabhupad also he uh, interchangeably uses garbhudaksha vishnu shirodaksha vishnu many times he interchanges it is because shila prabhupad says ultimately there is not much difference between these different vishnus so therefore even if it said original person no problem it's fine okay and then in the 16th verse now he describes about the impersonal brahman yasmin viruddha gata yo hi ani shampatanti vidyadayo vividak shaktaya anupurvyat 
तद्रह्म विश्व भवंतमाध्यम आनंद मात्रमिकारमहम प्रपद्ये my dear lord in your impersonal manifestation of brahman there are always two opposing elements knowledge and ignorance your multi energies are continuous continually manifest but the impersonal brahman which is undivided original changeless unlimited and blissful is the cause of the material manifestation because you are the same impersonal brahman i offer my respectful obeisances unto you hmm. so this is he is describing the impersonal brahman which has both vidya and avidya so uh, prabodh is writing all the supreme person is the original cause of all causes is impersonal effulgence known as brahman is the immediate cause of the material manifestation the immediate cause is the impersonal brahman which is uh, because the entire material manifestation is taking place in the impersonal brahman and uh, further down prabodh is quoting from the ishopanishad how um, the about the vidya and avidya on account of these different energies there is continually a manifestation of vidya and avidya and uh, but in fact the impersonal and personal realization develop in proportion to the development of devotional service and then prabodh is speaking about uh, quoting vishnu chakra thakur is giving the example of the person proceeding towards a destination the realization of uh, impersonal brahman parmatma and bhagwan so in these three verses he has described about the supreme lord in 15 in uh, 14 15 and 16 he has described about the swarup of the supreme lord and so therefore in text 17 then the question is raised okay we'll re- recite the verse and then go to the connection between the previous and this verse satya shisho hi bhagavam stava pad padmam ashis tatha anubajata purusharth murte hai अप्येवर्य भगवान्परीपातिदीन वाश्रेव वत्सक अनुग्रह काय लॉर्ड ओ सुप्रीम लॉर्ड यू आर द सुप्रीम पर्सोनिफाइड फॉर्म ऑफ ऑल बेनडिक्शन दे फोर फॉर वन हू अवाइड्स इन योर डिवोशनल सर्विस विद नो अदर डिजायर वर्शिपिंग योर लोटस स्वीट इज बेटर देन बिकमिंग किंग एंड लॉर्डिंग इट ओवर अ किंगडम that is the benediction of worshiping your lotus feet to ignorant devotees like me you are the causelessly merciful maintainer just like a cow who takes care of the newly born calf by supplying milk and giving it protection from attack okay this is a nice commentary here by vishnu chakra thakur on the verse okay somebody can read this o oh, young boy it is true you know my swarupa do now you are without material desire i will give you the result that you previously were determined to achieve please take it describing his ignorance dhruva prays for the sweetness of prema in this verse o lord your lotus sweet are the highest blessing ashisha ashiha the supreme result more than acquisition of a kingdom ashisha for whom are or, sorry for whom are you the highest blessing you are the personification of the purusharthas for those who worship you without material desire but the lord maintains even wretched persons dinan like us who worship uh, worship you with desires by giving a little sweetness of your lotus feet obtained by worship without desire what is the reason you are eager to give this mercy you are eager, eager to give mercy the lord thinks because he is a young man even though he does not know pure bhakti to me i will give i will I give him I give him give. a taste of pure bhakti's result my sweetness the lord is like a cow what's vashra vashra who makes the ignorant calf drink even though the calf does not serve the cow and who protects the calf from wild animals like wolves similarly the lord would uh, lord should let me have a taste of the sweetness of bhakti at his lotus feet and protect me from the obstacles to bhakti in the form of material desire okay so now the lord is saying oh you know you know my swarupa so therefore though now you are without material desire i'll still give you the results that you were determined to achieve so the lord is determined to give what dhruv maharaj was determined to get the lord is also determined to give that but now dhruv maharaj has lost the taste for getting those material things now he wants the sweetness of prema 
that is what he wants hmm? and so therefore in this verse he is praying that uh, at that time i was ignorant so therefore i did not know what to ask what not to ask but now i simply want prema and so therefore the lord is and so therefore the lord is uh, saying that is the so that dhruva maharaj is saying that the lord is like a cow and so even though the calf may be ignorant the calf may not may not understand what is good what is bad the calf may not understand but the cow knows and the cow gives milk and protection and everything whatever is required so therefore here dhruva maharaj is saying that it's saying praying to the lord that you are like a cow and so therefore please give me the sweetness of bhakti prema that is what i want and protect me from all the obstacles of bhakti in the form of material desires so the real obstacles of material desires so in this way dhruva maharaj is praying to the lord for his mercy shila prabhupada right such an adulterated devotee speaking about the adulterated devotee Uh, can never see the supreme personality of god at face to face he therefore felt very grateful for the causeless mercy of the lord so even though he had material desires the lord appeared before him therefore he is feeling very grateful uh, towards the end of the first paragraph a devotee must be very sincere in his devotional service then although there may be many things wrong on the devotee's part krishna will guide him and gradually elevate him to the highest position of devotional service mm, so a uh, very important statement so if the sincerity is there then even though there may be so many mistakes so many obstacles so many things may be there but the lord will give the guidance hmm. so because the lord is after all he is thinking about the welfare of the devotee surudam sarva bhutanam so therefore the lord he is ready to guide the devotee because of the sincerity even though there may be some material motivation some contamination some obstacles the lord removes all that and helps the devotee progress yoga kshemam vaham yaham so in the purport to that was shila prabhupada writes what is the meaning of yoga kshema so the lord helps the devotee to make progress on the path of devotional service that is the yoga and the kshema is whatever devotional service the devotee has performed he protects that so in this way the lord always helps the devotee but for that ananyas chintayanto maam for that that is the qualification that is the condition and therefore the sincerity in performing devotional service that is the qualification by which the lord reciprocates and so therefore uh, here the lord is being addressed as purushartha murti the ultimate goal of life and then prabhu is explaining what is the ultimate purushartha that is pancham purushartha that is prema that is what dhruva maharaj is aspiring for at this point of time so the last sentence of the purport dhruva maharaj being cognizant of his desire for material benefit wanted protection from the lord so that he might not be misled or deviated from the path of devotional service by material desires so that is what he wants he wants the protection of his devotional service from material desires so in this way dhruva maharaj offered these wonderful prayers to the lord any questions or clarifications on this section of dhruva maharaj's prayers yesterday when i was asking about that association of devotees is required and then um, means sham jagannath who had shared that the understanding that he is internally connecting to the master's instruction so that i had asked that how because here we talk very clearly like you shared also so many elaborate purports on how to stay in the iskon movement so practically propa the sharing not that stay with the instruction of a great soul and then remain aloof so now still i could not reconcile the teacher so where is the association for dhruva maharaj that's the question right uh, for dhruva maharaj for for narad boy also that time he went so what we see is that in the prayers eventually they all pray for this kind of a setup but in their own life example like we hear bharat maharaj case and we say problem case and here there are successful case study so we just say hari bol and if they had become problem case also then it would have been a lesson for us that association is important but then hmm. how, how do we okay so here going into the next section of uh, dhruva maharaj's lamentation so there it is mentioned so here he is praying for the association but 
the lord instead of giving him the association of devotees so he gives him the kingdom and so therefore dhruva maharaj is lamenting that actually i wanted association but the lord did not give me that association of devotees but of course dhruva maharaj continues his practice of devotional service and of course the other point is also this is uh, this is satya yoga where most people are practicing all the principles of dharma so it is not that he is surrounded by non devotees but immediately the lord does not give him the direct association of devotees does not give him prema he does not give him all that in a very direct sense and that is why dhruva maharaj actually laments that actually i wanted that i wanted prema in the association of devotees but because i had the previous material desires therefore the lord does not immediately fulfill them rather he gives me the kingdom to rule for 36000 years so that was dhruva maharaj's lamentation but yet of course dhruva maharaj is no ordinary devotee of course he is on the liberate platform having having association of direct association of the supreme lord and of course also in that in even over there it's not that he is bereft of the association of devotees because obviously most of the people are practicing dharma and so the association is definitely there and uh, he goes on and the lord also gives him the assurance the lord gives him the assurance as we will be seeing now the lord is going to speak to him and he gives him the assurance that you will definitely achieve the the spiritual world so the assurance is given so therefore obviously there cannot be any problems in dhruva maharaj's life because the lord's protection is definitely there the blessings of the lord is definitely there and that's my understanding Yes, which means after he met the Lord, then certain benedictions, certain way they manifested. What I am asking is that in the abide which is given by the spiritual master, like he was going to the forest, so he wanted to attain the Lord, and Narad Muni is his guru. So, if association of devotees is the basic setup in which he should attain that goal, then he should put him into some ashram setup where he actually can grow and because he has material desires also. It's not like he's he is like uh, free from material desires and he cannot get lost due to some distractions he has a material desire so better be safe in the association of devotees and be focused in the goal so how do we so as far as uh, the association is concerned for his performance of devotional service he got the association of narad muni who gave him instructions who gave him the process that is the abideya which he got from a devotee and then he practiced that as per those instructions and then everything is uh, so quick isn't it so so it's not that he had to go to some ashram and get some training and you know, everything was uh, fast forwarded 6 months 6 months direct darshan of the lord so that that is the potency of narad muni that much association was sufficient for him uh, that much association was sufficient he, he got the association he got the instruction the abide was given he practiced it finished but now having darshan of the supreme lord he is still praying for the association of devotees where actually he can experience the bliss of prema that is what he is asking for now but then that the lord doesn't give immediately that is why he laughs somebody wants to you want to add something you want to add something to this discussion okay anybody wants to add something to this discussion yes hari yes. krishna uh this uh, aspect of association it can be considered in two two ways that is one thing is the substance and another thing is the form in which it can be taken so there can be examples where people have apparently no proper association outside around them but they were still fixed in their devotion process like you see the example of vidura or vibhishana again these are all shastri example but also we can see within iskon sometimes there are devotees who are caught up in a very extreme place but they are very krishna conscious and also we can see that people may be in the middle of very good setup very good association but still they may not take to devotion service so it is not that the setup is not important but within that setup one has to internalize it that is the main aspect right and sometimes the internalization may happen without the external setup that is what happened in the case of dhruv maharaj for example of even prahlad maharaj he he heard in the womb and then outside what he all had was but he could retain it so of course these are shastrik example but the principles are similar 
that we hear that in Russia there was so much of you know opposition. So some sustained and many got drifted away also. That's also that. So when it comes to this age, then definitely Shri Prabhupada made a system because he knew that in Kaliuga an average person is very weak. He can't. Even if you see in the case of Goswami, they were not all six living together all the time. Even you see that they were doing bhajan here, there, going. Because Shavanam Kirtanam ultimately leads to Smaranam. And Spananam, through Spananam, once one comes to the stage, one is actually in touch with the Nam Rup Gunanila of the Lord. That's a stage itself, which he asks the further. But still, at that stage, one relishes to hear and chant with devotees. Although he will not get drifted, because remembering the Lord, Lord is personally guiding him as Paramatma. And Bharat Maharaj's case is an extreme example, as we say that, you know, there are multiple lessons Lord is teaching. So external thing is not denied, but still one has to understand that sometimes without external also one can internalize. And yet one relishes. That means a pure devotee relishes more to be with devotees and chanting and hearing than a neophyte. Neophyte may, you know, not have taste for hearing chanting. But for him, Svanadam also nourishes him. Right. And that's how we see in the life of such exalted people that once a person had come to a stage, that one has come to Smaranam stage where one can remember the Lord as per the advancement, then even the external settings are not as maybe required, still one will continue. But one will not deny that or one will not like say that I don't want it. Right. But without want, one will not fall down. But till one has come to that stage, till then if he just, you know, doesn't have the setup itself, doesn't have association in a physical gross way, then he will never grow to that. It's right. just like, you know, when you become expert to say driver, then along with driving, one can talk on mobile and one can you do so many things, one hand. But while learning, one has to learn with ABC and all the things. And while learning, one cannot say, but expert, you know, uh, he can do. So similarly, that is one of stage, one can actually in association with the Lord. He never, and similarly, associate with the devotee also through his manam, through remembering the instruction, through following that. Like Shila Prabhupada also, in his journey, he had no one. For one year, he had no association. Then also the devotees came, but it was not that the Prabhupada was taking their association in terms of learning something. He was training them, guiding them, and he relished it also. Later he chanted with them. We can see so many videos of Prabhupada dancing in the theater. He really relished it. But Prabhupada was complete in himself because he had that connection. So these are the stages. Just like in yoga, we have the yoga ruda and yoga, what is it? Yoga, yoga ruksha. One is a sadhaka, one is a siddha. Krishna also tells, for a sadhaka, work is the means, and for a siddha, giving a work is the stage. So similarly, association, these two aspects have to be understood, then it can be reconciled. If we just take the form aspect, then it will not be reconciled. But otherwise, these two aspects, if we take then you know, for different situations, it can be reconciled. Right. Thank you. In the, in the commentary to Machitta Madhgata Prana also, Vishnu Chakdaguru says it's applicable for both. It's applicable for the sadhakas as well as the siddhas. So, Katiyantascha Mamnitim Tushyan teacher, Raman teacher. So Tushanti Ramanti is, avail, is applicable to both the sadhakas also and the siddhas also. So they also relish. So, but valid points, very good points. Thank you for that. Somebody want, uh, Shamsa Ganabha, you want to say? What kind of determination he had, Dhruv Maharaj. Hmm. It's a very special case. And he could, uh, this we can see that he took the instruction so seriously. So that also shows that he, he has taken that association very seriously and that's why he was able to follow. Same thing we see in this case of Narada boy. Although the situation was very difficult, but the kind of association he had taken and that, that, uh, that helped him to go on without deviation. So they had taken that associ association very seriously and that's why they were able to follow. So external, the, the situation, we may not see that, uh, that kind of setup. Uh, because that was the situation, but they had taken the association very seriously. Right. Thank you. Okay, Toshan Amaru. This, at the beginning, he mentions these 12 prayers are like 12 Adityas. Hmm? Vishnu Chakathakur, in the beginning of this prayer, he writes, the Dhruva Maharaj, the prayers he's going to offer, they're like 12 Adityas. Dwadash Aditya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how Prabhuji these prayers? Uh, all these prayers are so illuminating like this. I'm not very clear actually. I mean, you have how, to show, how, how you have to show me the reference actually, what exactly he's saying. Then maybe we can. I'm not having immediately, but okay, we'll, it. okay, you show me the reference, then we'll discuss. Okay. Uh, association, Haridas Thakur, or Jobi Hamari Achare, 
तो उनका तो 24 घंटा एसोसिएशन नहीं था लेकिन वो एसोसिएशन में भी आते थे इन बिटवीन तो अभी हम जो प्रहलाद महाराज का भी देखते हैं तो उनको भी एसोसिएशन नहीं था और ध्रुव महाराज का भी एसोसिएशन नहीं था लेकिन उनको एसोसिएशन था कि उनका जो नारद मुनि ने दिया था तो वो स्ट्रॉन्ग एसोसिएशन था तो हमारे जीवन में देखते हैं कि हम 24 घंटा एसोसिएशन में हैं, लेकिन तो भी कुछ जैसे कि हम यहाँ अभी इतने वक्त है तो उसमें से भी हमारे साथ रह के या हो के वो भी एसोसिएशन छोड़ के जाते हैं तो वो उनका पर्सनल डिटर्मिनेशन कम है या कि एसोसिएशन का समस्या है तो एसोसिएशन सबके लिए है लेकिन कौन कितना लाभ उठाता है उसके उसके पर निर्भर है तो एसोसिएशन है सबके लिए बुक्स है ये भी एसोसिएशन है इतने सारे भक्त लोग हैं वो भी एसोसिएशन है हरिनाम है वो भी एसोसिएशन है एसोसिएशन तो सबके लिए अवेलेबल है हाँ तो लेकिन व्यक्ति क्या उसका लाभ उठाता है या नहीं उसके ऊपर निर्भर है तो मुझे तो लाभ लाभ उठाना वो मेरे लिए है ना मुझे तो वो करना ही पड़ेगा हाँ तो मैं अभी आपको मैं अथॉरिटी मान रहा हूँ और आप सबको एसोसिएशन भी दे रहे हैं और शास्त्र भी सिखा रहे लेकिन और आप सब बोल रहे कि आपका एसोसिएशन लेना चाहिए लेकिन एक दिन आप ही सब हम छोप को छोड़ के जा रहे तो फिर वो एसोसिएशन फिर हम किसके ऊपर निर्भर रहे कि हमने आपको तो प्योर रिहोटी मान के आपका एसोसिएशन ले रहे थे तो फिर एसोसिएशन हम किस मा, कोई मापदंड होना चाहिए ना कि किसका एसोसिएशन लेना है नहीं हाँ तो यहाँ पर हमने कई सारे परपोर्ट हमने देखा है प्रोपा जी कहते हैं कि किसका एसोसिएशन लेना चाहिए प्योर हाँ, नहीं नहीं लेकिन आप बोल रहे हैं कि जब तक वो मैसेज दे रहा है समझो आप वो खुर्ची पे बैठे है हा? और हमें लेक्चर दे रहे तो आप प्योर ड्यूटी और जैसे खुर्ची के नीचे उतर गए तो आप प्योर ड्यूटी नहीं आप कुछ दूसरे एक्टिविटी में लग गए तो प्योर ड्यूटी नहीं फिर वो फिर से आ गए तो जब श्री प्रभा जी को पूछा गया कि क्या आप परफेक्ट हैं श्री प्रभा जी ने कहा मैं परफेक्ट नहीं हूं लेकिन जो मैसेज है वो परफेक्ट है तो जब तक व्यक्ति वो जो भगवत संदेश है उसको दोहरा रहा है वो परफेक्ट है हाँ नहीं वही तो बोल रहा हूँ ना मैं क्यों आप दोहरा रहे हैं लेकिन ये रूम में आप ठीक है परफेक्ट है लेकिन जैसे होते हैं कि बाहर जाके खाना रेस्टोरेंट में आप चाय पी के आ रहे हाँ तो आप, अगर... तो आप बोल रहे नहीं नहीं मैं वो नहीं मैं तो बाहर गया अभी तो मैं प्योर दे रहा हूँ ना तो अगर कोई वैसा करता है ना अगर कोई वैसा करता है तो उसको ये कुर्सी नहीं दिया जाए नहीं आप क्या बोल रहे हैं कि प्योर मैसेज दे रहे आप तो प्योर मैसेज दे रहे ना अभी लेकिन जैसे आप हॉल के बाहर जा रहे हैं तो फिर उसको क्या करना वो तो इसलिए वो 24 घंटा अगर उसमें रथ है तो उसका एसोसिएशन लेना है लेकिन हमें दिख रहा है कोई कि हम भले हमारा अथॉरिटी है लेकिन मुझे दिख रहा है इनको नहीं दिख रहा है मैं ऊपर ऊपर बैठा हूँ कुर्सी पे और ये नीचे बैठे तो उनको नहीं दिख रहा है वो कॉर्नर में क्या कर रहे हैं मुझे दिख रहा है और लेकिन आप बोल रहे हैं कि नहीं नहीं इनका एसोसिएशन लो तो उस देखिए एसोसिएशन जबरदस्ती नहीं होता है अगर हमें प्रेरणा प्राप्त हो रही है तो हम एसोसिएशन ले सकते हैं नहीं मिल रहा है तो मत हाँ मुझे वही कहना था कि हमें जबरदस्ती हाँ, जबरदस्ती जबरदस्ती कुछ नहीं भक्ति में कुछ जबरदस्ती नहीं है सब स्वेच्छा से होता है कुछ जबरदस्ती <laughs> ये देखिए ये क्लास में क्लास में जबरदस्ती नहीं है तो इसलिए कुछ लोग आते हैं कुछ लोग जाते हैं बीच में चले जाते हैं कुछ कुछ जबरदस्ती नहीं है सब स्वेच्छा पर भक्ति मतलब स्वेच्छा हाँ तो देखिये यहाँ क्लास में हम देख रहे हैं हाँ तो सब स्वेच्छा के ऊपर हम कुछ जबरदस्ती नहीं करते तो हमें एसोसिएशन ग्रंथ और व्यक्ति भागो दोनों का ही दृढ़ लेना चाहिए सही बात एकदम बिल्कुल सही थैंक यू धन्यवाद हरे कृष्ण हाँ ओके हाँ बोलिए बोलिए श्रीपद माप हाँ हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी यस जस्ट इन दैट डिस्कशन व्हाट रेवतीपति क्रॉसिंग ही वेरी वंडरफुली एक्सप्लेन Mm-hmm. I just remembered one uh, incident which uh, Radhanath Swami Maharaj explains in one of the lecture mm-hmm. that uh, there was one person who came to New Vrindavan and uh, he looked at the deity of Prabhupada and he offered obeisances very well and but externally he was looking as if a uh, very normal person, uh, normal hairs, normal uh, look, no tilak, nothing like that, no kanti mala. But he offered obeisances to Prabhupada. and then maharaj saw him and then maharaj thought let me talk to him so maharaj spoke with him then maharaj uh, came to know that he is chanting 16 rounds for quite a long period of time 
and then he asked uh, how are you chanting so he said hair krishna hair krishna he did not knew proper pronunciation h a r e he pronounces hair and then maharaj explained him the right uh, pronunciation and then maharaj explained further things of krishna consciousness and in this way he got corrected uh, in a proper way so just uh, corroborating what revati pati prabhu saying that there was actually no proper setup for him but still he could pick up uh, chanting from books of shila prabhu pad and finally he ended up in the right association good thank you for sharing the example okay so we go to the next section where the lord bendix druva okay somebody can read the translations now next verse text 18 the great sage matra continued my dear vidura when dhruv maharaj who had good intentions in his heart finished his prayer the supreme lord the personality of godhead who is very kind to his devotees and servants congratulated him speaking as follows okay text 19 shri bhagavan vacha vedaham te vyavasitam ridhi rajanya balaka tat prayachami badram te durapam api suvrata the personality of god had said my dear druva son of king you have executed pious vows and i also know the desire within your heart although your desire is very ambitious and very difficult to fulfill i shall favor you with its fulfillment all good fortune unto you mm-hmm. okay so here prabhupada is mentioning that um, the fact is that dhruva maharaj was very much afraid in his mind for he had aspired after material benefit in discharging his devotional service and this was hampering him from reaching the stage of love of god so that was his fear that uh, i desired a material thing now will i get love love of god that was his fear so by saying bhadram te by saying all good fortune unto you the lord is assuring him don't worry i'll fulfill your material desires also but at the same time you'll get prema also i'll give you both so that is that is the import of bhadram te and uh, yes towards the end of the purport from other rites generally the lord does not award a pure devotee material opulence even though he may desire it but dhruva maharaj's case was different the lord knew that he was such a great devotee that in spite of having material opulence he would never be deviated from love of god so therefore he gave him material opulence but at the same time gave him love please continue reading 2021 the supreme personality of god had continued my dear dhruva i shall award you the glowing planet known as the pole star which will continue to exist even after the dissolution at the end of the millennium no one has ever ruled this planet which is surrounded by all the solar systems planets and stars all the luminaries in the sky circumambulate this planet just as bulls tread around a central pole for the purpose of crushing grains keeping the pole star to their right all the stars inhabited by the great sages like dharma agni kashyapa and shukra circumambulate this planet which continues to exist even after the dissolution of all others okay so this is dhruva dhruva loka it's dhruva it is eternal okay go ahead after your father goes to the forest and awards you the rule of his kingdom you will rule continuously the entire world for 36000 years and all your senses will continue to be as strong as they are now you will never become old next the lord continued sometime in the future your brother uttama will go hunting in the forest and while absorbed in hunting he will be killed your stepmother suruchi being maddened upon the death of her son will go to search him out in the forest but she will be devoured by a forest fire you can read this purport purport dhruva maharaj came to the forest to search out the supreme personality of godhead with a revenging spirit against his stepmother his stepmother had insulted dhruva who was not an ordinary person but a great vaishnav an offense at the lotus feet of a vaishnav is the greatest offense in this world because of having insulted dhruva maharaj suruchi would become mad upon the death of her son and would enter a forest fire and thus her life would be ended this was specifically mentioned by the lord to dhruva because 
he was determined for revenge against her from this we should take the lesson that we should never try to insult a vaishnav not only should we not insult a vaishnav but we should not insult anyone unnecessarily when suruchi insulted dhruva maharaj he was just a child she of course did not know that dhruva was a great recognized vaishnav and so her offense was committed unknowingly when one serves a vaishnav unknowingly one still gets the good result and if one unknowingly insults a vaishnav one suffers the bad result a vaishnav is especially favored by the supreme personality of godhead pleasing him or displeasing him directly affects the pleasure and displeasure of the supreme lord shila vishwanath chakravarti thakur in his eight stanzas of prayer to the spiritual master has sung yasya prasadat bhagavat prasadah by pleasing the spiritual master who is a pure vaishnav one pleases the personality of godhead but if one displeases the spiritual master one does not know where he is going okay so an important lesson so if even unknowingly one should try to avoid to offending any vaishnav and what to speak of vaishnav prabha says any living entity also because no one knows which living entity will become how exalted a vaishnav at any point of time so therefore the important lesson is that one should always be careful while dealing with anyone and that's the nature of a vaishnav a devotee is always amanina manadena so always respectful to all living entities so if one is always having that type of behavior then one will always try to be free from offenses try to as we have been discussing in the previous class also austerity of speech austerity of the body austerity of the mind krishna speaking all these things in the bhagavad gita so as an austerity one can try and practice good behavior so that one is always very careful <clears throat> Okay, please can you reading the next two verses, which are which are which the Lord is speaking. Hmm. The Lord continued, "I am the heart of all sacrifices. You will be able to perform many great sacrifices and also give great charities. In this way, you will be able to enjoy the blessings of material happiness in this life, and at the time of your death, you will be able to remember me." Okay, so the Lord is giving assurance that at the at the time of death. you will be able to remember me ante mam sam smarishyasi so lord is giving that assurance material happiness also at the end you will be able to remember me and you will go back to the spiritual worlds prabhupada writes in this purport <clears throat> our krishna conscious movement is designed to teach people and to learn ourselves the exact instruction of the personality of god it in this way we shall continuously perform the sankirtan yagna and continuously chant the hari krishna mantra then at the end of our lives we shall certainly be able to remember krishna and our program of life will be successful in this age distribution of prasad has replaced distribution of money no one has sufficient money to distribute but if we distribute krishna prasad as far as possible this is more valuable than the distribution of money so this is how we can and the last verse the personality of god had continued my dear dhruva after your material life in this body you will go to my planet which is always offered obeisances by the residents of all other planetary systems it is situated above the planets of the seven rishis and having gone there you will never have to come back again to this material world okay so there are two opinions on this which vishnu chakravarti explains that on one hand the dhruva loka itself is like an eternal dham never to be destroyed so one opinion is that dhruva maharaj he will rule this world for 36000 years at the end of that he will go to the dhruva planet which will stay till the end of brahma's life and at the end of brahma's life then he will go to actually vaikuntha he will leave the dhruva loka also and he'll go back to vaikuntha but dhruva loka itself is also eternal that is itself like uh, vaikuntha in fact it is described that as a place where uh, shirodaksha vishnu resides this like shwetadweep so therefore the other opinion is that he continues to live over there because it is as good as vaikuntha but from um, but from this verse it appears that at the end of his life on dhruva loka then he will actually go to vaikuntha where lord vishnu resides so both the opinions are there in any case it is the eternal abode of the lord so the lord is giving all these assurances to dhruva maharaj 
and because he had that revengeful attitude towards suruchi and uttam so then the lord is also saying that they will also be punished so in this way all of dhromaraj's material desires also have been fulfilled and at the end he will go back to the spiritual world in this way the lord fulfills all of dhromaraj's desires but of course in the next section we will see how dhromaraj repents for it and then so okay so uh, i hope everyone is aware that we are having class tomorrow also because monday is ekadashi so we are not having class on monday so in, instead of monday we are having class tomorrow we'll continue tomorrow thank you very much shreela prabhupad ki jai grandrashimad bhagavatam ki jai samvedh gaur bhakta vrind ki jai